Hi, welcome to the part 3 of this video series. We are covering AC104 real certification questions. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video. Let's jump into the questions. Question 7. You can pause the video, read it carefully. So you have your data center in Los Angeles and New York. And these are configured as geo cluster sites for site resiliency. So resiliency means if Los Angeles fails, New York will be up and vice versa. So this is the list of data storage requirements. You can go through it. The question says, what redundancy options we should recommend? So these are different redundancy options. The C and D are wrong because C is zone and D is local. And if you see this requirement, it says the node should be in separate geographic locations, geolocations. So geographic locations doesn't mean different AZ or data center, it means different regions. That's why zone is in one region and local is like local to that Los Angeles or New York. So these two will not work. That leaves us with A and B. So geo redundant means if one fails, then the other can be accessed. But here the requirement says data should be read from secondary location as well as primary location at the same time. That can be done through read only geo redundant storage. So if you see this documentation, it clearly says that the data in the secondary region is not available for read and write unless there is a failover. That is why A is wrong. So B is the answer. Let's move forward. Question 8. So this question talks about a story. Let's forget the story. The main point here is you want to review the ARM template, whatever template was used here. And if you want to review it, the solution they have given is you will access the virtual machine blade. The answer is no here because you should access the resource group blade. So this is the similar same question, but the solution is different. You access the resource group blade. The answer is yes, because ARM is a resource manager and these all storage account resource group blob container file share are resources and it is available in the resource group blade only. So that's yes. Question nine, same question, but it is giving a different solution. You access via the container blade. This is wrong because you can access by resource group uh, group blade because these are resources. Let's see question 10. So this is a question. So you have an availability set which has three VMs in the availability set. These white boxes are VMs and blue box is the availability set. Now you want to resize one of the VMs. For example, this VM you want to resize. Suppose you want to make this big, this VM, you want to make it big. How can you do that? See, you should remember the thumb rule here. You will have to stop all the three VMs. See, the thumb rule is clear. In an availability set, you have to stop all VMs before resize because same hardware is used by all VMs. If you see this documentation on resizing virtual machines, so this documentation is clearly saying that you will have to stop all VMs. Okay. So C is the answer. Uh, let's look at question 11. This is the question. So you have a VM and the VM has a disk and you want to attach this disk to a different VM. So what is the first step? A says stop the VM and that includes the data disk. That's the first step. See, A is wrong. C is the right answer. You can directly detach the data disk. That's the first step. See, this is the documentation and it clearly says you, you can easily detach it directly. But what it does is it removes the disk from the virtual machine but does not remove it from the storage and detach a disk it is not automatically deleted one extra information you can also reattach it if you want to use it again so this is the answer question 12 see by number each availability set can have uh, three fault domains and 20 update domains so that is a thumb rule in this question the number of availability set is uh, sorry, the number of VMs is not known in a single availability set and the number of availability set is also not known. So we will go with the max value in this case. We will set the platform fault domain count property as max. Question 13. So this is talking about same question. This is talking about update domain and not fault domain. So update domain, what is our thumb rule? 20 update domain. 20 update domains is the thumb rule. So the answer here is 20. Let's see question 14. See whatever blah 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 the question talks about. The bottom line is that you want to st 
store you want to make sure the password cannot be stored in plain text that is the question so thumb rule says if you don't want to store the password in plain text you store it in key vault as your key vault so this is used to safeguard cryptographic keys and other secrets and you can see the documentation further it stores keys passwords certificates and other secrets so we know for sure as your key vault is there for sure and once you have key vault what will you need out of this will you need backup policy no as your policy no you will need access policy you want to access it right you want to access the password somebody wants to read the password access it so you need access policy see as your policy is used for compliance and governance if you want to make sure that only certain type of instance of vm is created in a skill set then you apply this backup policy is a stuff which is used for for example you have to take a vm backup or a database backup then you use this so this is the answer let's look at question 15 so you can read this question it's a bit of a long question in a nutshell suppose you have a software okay your windows restarts the software is installed and immediately after that you want to ensure that some configuration file runs okay just something like a bootstrap something of that sort should run so when you have to do something like a bootstrap so a is the right answer in this case because you have to do it in a batch file and place it in this directory see gpo typically is used with ad so with active directory that is a usage so let's look at question 16 see long story cut short it is just about you have an image from on-prem of a vm and you want to upload it in azure so that you can create new azure vms which powershell command lets should you use see the first one we use to add vms so in this case since it is on-prem to uh, cloud we need a vst this is the right answer but if you want to from cloud to cloud then we have to use az image so let's look at question 17 you can pause this video read this carefully so this question so if i see this question there is a hyper v so i'll use a hyper v site first and since this answer is talking about sorry the question is talking about replicating to azure we will use a uh, replication policy and recovery services vault as well because from there once you replicate the recovery can happen from that place so these are the three things that we have as an answer see storage account is just used to store some uh, files and etc so it is not relevant here traffic manager instance load balancer it has a different purpose endpoint every service in azure has an endpoint using which communication across the network or within the network can be done across different azure services so this is the end of part three please subscribe to my channel this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications see you in the next part